Good morning, gang. Happy Wednesday morning. All right, so after half an hour, 45 minutes of messing around and redoing settings and all this sort of stuff, I'm back in a horizontal box again. I don't know what the hell happened last night with YouTube messing with settings on channels and changing thumbnails. They had to have something going on, but okay, back to normal, it seems. So, all right. Uh talking about a question that comes up all the time. And I mean, again, it's a crystal ball question that we keep looking at answers to. And there's a lot of different moving parts to this. When's the balloon going to go up? Right? You know, and as I've said many times, I mean, nobody's going to be able to tell you, well, you know what? It's going to be June 13th, 2026 at 4.52 in the afternoon. None of us know that. Okay? He knows that. We don't. Okay? We're not privy to that information. But what we can do is take a look at facts and come up with some sort of predictions. Okay? Now, a lot of you guys last night again asked me about October 4th. Like I said last night, that could be just an emergency alert system test. Maybe nothing. Okay, It could be something serious and... You know, people have asked about Faraday cages or putting things in a microwave or whatever. And I know the, the putting things in a microwave is a very common suggestion that you see in a lot of places. And I'll just give you a quick answer to it if you want to see if it's going to work. Because it might work with some microwaves, okay? Probably older ones. Put your phone in it. Call your phone. If the phone rings, it doesn't work, okay? Uh, but just give you that as an idea. There's an easy, simple test to see if a signal can get through. So, you know, obviously if a signal can get through, you put your phone in the microwave and they send out some nefarious test or whatever it is, it still gets there. But that's not what we're going on to today. Uh, it's been a while since we've talked about the grand solar minimum, talked about climate change, you know, all the, the Looney Tune crap, the Greta Thunberg, Al Gore, John Kerry, Klaus Schwab, World Economic Forum farce that is, oh my God, the earth is getting too hot and I don't have to go back and tell you about all the predictions that have been wrong for decades. In five years, we're not going to have, you know, it's going to be the first year with no polar ice caps. That's what John Kerry said in 2009, right? You know, you guys I've probably heard a hundred of them. None of them came to fruition. So we look at facts. What is going to happen by science, okay, not by pseudoscience, not by telling a lie often enough that people believe it, i.e. climate change, okay, but actual science, okay. And I talk about the grand solar minimum here. When are we going to worry? Well, I ran across a story that, of course, I'll link below because you guys know I always put my sources below. Right? And if you don't look at them, that I just say, look in the descriptions below the videos, guys. Okay? That's where my sources come from. That's where the details that I'm talking about come from. There's important information in there. Take two seconds and read what's in there. It's usually a short paragraph, a couple of sentences, and maybe a link or two. So we talk about what the astrophysicists are figuring out, okay? And no, not Neil deGrasse Tyson, who thinks, hey, you know what? This is going to be a great time. Men should be competing in sports with women. No, not that kind of crap, okay? You know, it's one of those. Stay in your own lane. You're an astrophysicist. You don't need to be talking about genetics, okay? You know, I'm not going to go to go to my lawyer and say, hey, I need my appendix out. It doesn't work that way. So in reading this from science about what's coming up, when should we, what, what should be the date close that we're ready for? And that would be 2030, which means we have about six years, okay, before Mother Nature unleashes her wrath. Now, it could be a lot earlier before Joe Biden screws everything up or before Putin does something stupid or Zelensky does something else stupid 
or Xi Jinping, or, you know, we could have political strife beforehand. We could have economic collapse beforehand. <clears throat> but let's look at science. Throughout this all climate change crap, all we keep hearing is global warming, global warming, global warming, blah, blah, blah. We've got to get rid of CO2, you know, which again is about the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Okay. You know, how did you know, it's, how are we going to save the planet? By killing all the people. Yeah, that's probably an accurate statement, you know, because we are the disease that Mother Nature is fighting against. Okay. But sorry, you know, I'm not gonna save the planet by killing myself. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You know, maybe these environmentalists want to do that, go ahead, you know, feel free to be the first one to volunteer. <clears throat> so listening to these astrophysicists, what they are talking about is everything that's going on with the Grand Solar Minimum, okay? And we are currently in one. This one started a couple of years ago. We're at the beginning of it. Uh, this one is supposed to last 23 years, yeah, 33 years, from 2020 to 2053, okay? So we're three years into it. We're at the very beginning. The last time we saw... <clears throat> a grand solar minimum was about 400 years ago, the Maunder minimum. Okay. The United States didn't exist, and the Native Americans weren't exactly keeping meticulous records on what was going on. Okay. So we don't have a whole lot of data to go on on how it affected the United States, or Canada for that matter, too. Mexico, I guess, yeah, you'd be included, but there are probably better records in Mexico from 400 years ago than there are here. So we look at what happened in Europe. Well, what the Grand Solar Minimum does, as you guys well know, and we're going to have temperature extremes, we're going to have more uh, natural disasters, I guess, however you want to put it. Okay. But while we hear all this bullshit about global warming, global warming, all this, right? That's actually the exact opposite of what science is telling us. Okay? They can't really do something with global cooling, right? <clears throat> you know, you can't make money off of saying everything's getting colder, we need to increase our fossil fuel use or something. It doesn't work. They don't make money off of that. But that's actually what's happening. What we have coming up, and this is what you need to prepare for, make your, and you've got time, okay, but to figure this out. This is the quote coming out of Valentina Zarkova, okay, who's one of the premier British, now British, uh, astrophysicists in the world. Between cycle 25 and 11 years of cycle 26, which is the least active cycle, this is her quote, and between cycle 26 and 27 will be the coldest period on Earth, and we will feel it through a lack of vegetation. <clears throat> now, could we have another little ice age? Yeah. Could we have another... Year without a summer, granted that was from volcanic activity, okay, just didn't get any sunlight. But let's start think about cold temperatures. Let's start thinking about a lack of vegetation. Are the actions of these <clears throat> climate lunatics actually contributing to make the problem worse which I think that's the plan, okay. so that they can come in and be a savior. Why do I say that? Look at what's going on right now. Inflation was running about 2% at the end of, of Trump's presidency. Joe got it up to 9.1% last summer and now is taking credit for bringing inflation rates down. You create the problem and then try to capture glory from solving the problem that you created yourself. You know, we still aren't back to inflation where it was when Biden took over. 
but he's trying to give himself a pat on the back for bringing inflation down that he created. Same thing with this whole climate change crap. They're going to do whatever they can to eliminate CO2. Now think about this. If you eliminate CO2, which plants need to survive, I mean, if you guys know how plant life works, okay, plants take in CO2 and give out oxygen, exactly the opposite of what we do. We have a symbiotic relationship with plant life. If there is no plant life, there is no people life, okay? The carbon dioxide that we all create, cow farts create, whatever, is absorbed and filtered, okay, all this, oh, the pollution. Plants filter the CO2 and release it as oxygen to give you an idea how that works. A lot of you guys, or at least some of you guys, garden via aquaponics, right? Okay, aquaponics, you're growing everything in water and you put fertilizer in the water and that's how the plants feed. A lot of people will put fish in a tank and circulate the water from the fish tank to feed their plant. You know, I mean, fish poop is good fertilizer. What happens? The fish relieve themselves in the water. It pumps through. The plants take out the nutrients from the fish poop, the fish urine, whatever it is. The water is now filtered and the fish are back in clean water. Okay? Why do you put fish, why do you put plants in a fish tank to clean the water? That's the purpose. Okay. It's the same with the entire ecosystem we live in. The trees take in the carbon dioxide. They excrete, if you will, oxygen that we breathe. We take in the oxygen, we excrete the carbon dioxide. And it's a big circle. But we want to get rid of all the carbon dioxide. Well, if we get rid of the carbon dioxide that gets rid of the plants, we have this grand solar minimum that is going to affect us by making it very cold. Okay, You guys know as well as I do. Tomatoes don't grow well. Peppers don't grow well. Food doesn't grow well in cold weather. Okay, You don't see a whole lot of corn stalks growing in snow. Right? So what is going to happen in 2030 when we are to, to face some of the coldest, coldest temperatures in modern history. There's going to be a lack of food. If we also, at the same time, are trying to eliminate carbon dioxide, that's going to give the plants a double whammy that, gee, there's no heat that I need to grow and there's no CO2 that I need to grow. Screw it, I ain't going to grow. Well, sorry, Mr. Cornstalk says to you, ain't no corn this year. Oops, we got a problem. Okay. This is what I'm saying. This is where we need to start looking at. If people ask all the time, what's a date? <clears throat> at least scientifically, you can use that date. You have six years. How much can you store in the next six years? Because if this lasts from... 2030, still through 2053, which is the end of this cycle, that's 23 years. There ain't no way any of us is storing 23 years worth of food. So now what you've got the option to do is store food, figure out how you can produce food indoors where you are the one that is going to have to somehow control the heat, okay? the oxygen, the CO2, okay? You actually need to start figuring out in the future how to create, to use this term, your own microclimate that might be inside a barn, inside your house. Maybe it's a wallapini, okay? Whatever it would be. It's worth learning how to start growing stuff indoors how to start raising things indoors people ask about raising rabbits or something that's important because when people say well you know what i can just go hunt my meat what do you think squirrels eat what do you think deer eat okay 
all the meat that you say you're going to hunt that needs to eat the plants that aren't there? You don't have any deer, you don't have any squirrels, you don't have any wild rabbits, whatever, to go hunt. This is the point. Read into this stuff. Listen to the actual science, not the fake science, the science fiction that's peddled by Greta Thunberg or Tony Fauci or anybody. <clears throat> and listen to, you know, people that actually know something. I don't know, if I'm going to talk about, if I'm going to have an intelligent discussion or try to with somebody to talk about the climate, do I want to talk to an astrophysicist or a 19-year-old high school dropout? Figure out where your source of information comes, and then you look at it and go, hmm, which one might have a little bit more knowledge on this topic? I don't know. Personally, I'd rather listen to Miss Arkova than Miss Thunberg. <laughs>